Hello guys, today we will be modeling, UV unwrapping and texturing this Chesterfield sofa using Blender and Substance Painter. Let's get to it. First thing we've got to do is do setup. So first we're going to create our collections, one for the model, in this case just our cube. And then another collection for the render, which will be our lighting camera and then later the set we'll use to render out the couch. Next, we're going to go over to Edit, the top, Preferences. We're going to go to Add-ons. We're going to search Node and tick Node Wrangler. This we will use to help with the texturing. And we're going to set up Auto Mirror. We'll use this to apply the mirror modifier to our mesh ladder and automatically cut half of the mesh away. Next, we're going to go down at our resources. You'll find links in the description for the resources required to model this couch. Okay. First, we have our HDRI. You can download it at 4K. It will be perfect. Um, perfect for this project. Next, we have this leather, which we'll be using for the bottom of the couch, as well as the area below the cushion. We'll be using this leather for the majority of the couch. And then finally, we have our Chesterfield's leather, which we will be using for the cushions of the couch. Now that our resources are done in the background, we can start with modeling. First thing we're going to do is hide everything we require for rendering, as we're not going to use them at the moment. We're going to move them over to the render collection, and then just disable this collection. Next, I'm going to enable a reference so I have something to point to and refer to as I explain. Then we're going to click on the cube, click on the little arrow next to the gizmo, click on edit panel, and then click on auto mirror. Now this will allow us to half the work by mirroring everything we do on the x-axis across to the other side of the x-axis. We're going to go into edit mode, we're going to enable snapping, I'm going to enable uh, x-ray mode, go to front view, go to face select, and just select these bottom faces. We're going to move it 10 centimeters off the floor. So 10, one white line above the red line. Do the same for the top. I'm going to move it 30 from the red line. So it's just above our reference. Exactly what we want to do. Next, we can select everything. Go to the top view. As you can see, our couch is currently too deep. We have to have about half the depth we currently have, so about a meter. So it matches up with the cushion of this couch. Press SY.5 to half the depth of the couch. Next, we're going to disable our transparency mode. We're going to grab our side. We want to extrude it by 25 centimeters, E.25. We do the same at the back. Grab these two faces. Extrude, E.25. So we have an owl shape. This is going to be the armrest in the back. Next, we're going to clean it up quickly as to make it easier for us to work with our subdivision surface modifier. I'm going to grab this, this vertex, this vertex, and this one. Press M and merge at last. The same at the bottom. This will give us a nice clean edge flow around the corner, helping us with some other problems we might occur if we do not do this. In the main case, a corner with a, a lot of geometry which doesn't UV unwrap very nicely. Next, we're gonna grab these two faces, extrude them 30 centimeters, so they're equal to the bottom of the armrest, E.3. We're gonna extrude another 30 centimeters, E.3, so it's equal to the top of the couch. Next, we're gonna grab this face, we want to extrude it 15 centimeters so it is equal to the overhang of the other couch. So 0 0.15, as you can see over here. Grab this one. I'm going to do exactly the same. E.15. Now, again, we want to merge these vertices as to reduce the awkward um, geometry we're going to get here with the subdivision surface modifier. Grab these two. Merge it in this one. Same with the bottom. Okay. 
Now that our couch is modeled, we're going to make our cushion. And select this face over here. Press Shift D so we duplicate it. We're going to left click, Control Z, Shift, Shift D. We're going to right click to leave it where it is. Press P, selection, so it's separated from our couch. We have a couch and we have a cushion. Select the cushion, press A, press E, point two, to actually 20 centimeters. So now that we have our cushion and our couch, we're gonna select both of them. Um, currently we only have the mirror model file, which is exactly what we want. We wanna press control two. This will add a subdivision surface with a level two. As you can see over here in the modifier stack. Currently it looks like a spaceship, which is not exactly what we want. We want something that's more uh, uh, rectangular, but still with the nice curved edges. So let's turn our spaceship into a couch. We're going to do this by adding supporting edge loops. Our snapping is still enabled. We can now close that one. Press Ctrl R. We want to click left and then want to click right to place the edge loop as it is. Next, we want to press S, Y, 0 to flatten it out. I'm going to go to our top view so we can move it 10 centimeters from the edge of the couch. All of our supporting edge loops will be about 10 centimeters from, the, from an edge. Either the corner or the front, depends on where we're going to place it. Press G and the Y and our snapping should do most of the work. I'm going to do another one, S, Y, 0, G in the Y, again until just before we reach the corner, so 10 centimeters from that, that line over there. For the middle, we're going to do exactly the same, S, X, 0, I'm going to move it 10 centimeters, okay, shift, alt, so I just deselected it, G in the X axis, until again 10 centimeters from the edge. This gives us a shape that is fairly closely to that one. Now let's enable auto smoothing before we continue so we can preview a closer result and see how far off the reference we are. Grab our couch, cushion, our sofa, right click and we want to place a shade auto smooth. We want to increase our angle to 45 or else we're going to get these sharp edges over here which is not what we want. Increase to 45. And bam, that fixes our smoothing issues. Next we want to do, we want to add two edge loops across this area. One a little bit lower and then one exactly where it spawns in. So first we're going to add the one in we want to move. Move it down. Just move over to big one. G and the Y. And the Z axis. And have it snapping to this one and the other one we want to snap in between. That's just going to tighten up this crease over here. Next, we're going to enable the on cage modifier. And if everything looks great to you, similar to this couch, we'll move on to this cushion. The cushion is going to have three supporting edge loops. We're going to place two across here. We're going to scroll the mouse wheel once. So we have two edge loops. I'm going to grab the first one by pressing Shift Alt. Going to the top view. And again, 10 centimeters from the front. So uh, once it's aligned with this line, we should be okay. G in the Y axis, should feel it stop snapping around here. There. And again, if it's moving very slowly, you're zoomed in too much. Just zoom out until you can't see the, the small cubes, small grid units. Shift Alt. G in the Y axis, snap, snap. And over there, it should be done. Now we just need to fix this slope over here. We will do that by adding the funnel supporting edge loop. If you hover like this, you're going to get one across this edge. If you go uh, closer to an edge that is horizontal, you will be able to place one horizontal. You go G in the X axis, then 10 centimeters from the edge, and now our couch cushion is complete. The next thing that we're going to do is add our feet but before we before we add our feet we want to move our couch just slightly forward in edit mode so we're going to grab our couch our cushion we're going to tap into edit mode select everything 
Go to the side view. As you can see it's currently not centered. I go G in the Y axis. You want to go one. It's about 10 centimeters. One snap should be enough. Then we'll be able to put our feet over here and right here around the back. To make our feet, we are gonna use UV spheres with a, mother, with a mother, mirror modifier on it. Control A, add a UV sphere. I'm gonna bring the segment down to 16 and the rings down to 12. This reduces the amount of geometry. Next, we're gonna shade it smooth. And then we're going to start making the feet. To start modeling the feet, we will first add a mirror modifier. So we'll click on the wrench, click on add modifier, and then select mirror modifier. Little butterfly. We want to mirror across the X axis so we can have the feet on the left and the right. And we also want to add a mirror across the Y axis so we have our feet at the front and the back, reducing the amount of vertices we have to model okay these feet are way too huge we want to decrease the size but first we're also gonna disable our snapping as we do not require at the moment or for the rest of the video at the moment okay so we're gonna go into edit mode select our uv sphere and we're gonna scale it down until it is just barely clipping still into the couch Okay. Now we want to move it all the way over until it's just on the edge of the sofa. Right around there should be fine. So about five centimeters from the edge of the sofa should be fine. Next, we want to go to the side view and we want to move it forward until it's about five centimeters from the front of the couch. As you can see our couch is still a bit off center so we're going to leave our feet as is we're going to grab our couch again tab into edit mode select everything we're going to go g in the y axis and we're just going to slide it a bit more around here should be fine we're going to go back to our uv spheres g in the y axis again and tile about here this is exactly where we want it as it's out of the way and you won't kick it and break your toes. Next, we're going to grab our vertex select. Go inside the couch. Select the tip over here. And the bottom of the foot as well. This time we want to enable proportional editing. This will allow us to deform the whole mesh from just the two points. I'm going to press S in the Z axis. Then you just want to scroll until your wheel encompasses the whole foot and a bit more you want to create a donut looking shape that's not too flat and also not too bulgy so as soon as this face starts to flatten out you should be fine next we can select this face uh, this uh, foot and just move it up until it's just above the z-axis uh, above the x-axis it should be clipping inside your couch you can check like this it is then your feet is in the correct place if it is not just move it a bit more until it fully clips you should not be able to see the top vertices should all be on the inside excellent and that's our foot next we're going to make these wood panels for the front of the couch by grabbing this these faces we're going to go over to face select a proportional editing we can disable for now Grab this face, this face, this face, this face, this face, this face, shift D, press P, selection, grab this one and this one, shift D, P, selection. I'm going to go out of edit mode for the couch, grab this this plane that we made now, and this one as they were flat, flat. I'm going to press left click, I want to right click, I'm going to click join or control J. Next, we're going to go over to our modifiers. We want to add a solidify modifier. As to add thickness to the wood, we're going to place in the front of the couch. On the solidify modifier, we want to uh, tick uh, rim only. 
So this will give us the rim and the front, but not the back of the wood. We're going to increase our thickness to, by, to 0.5, as uh, 0 0.05, as that will be about a 5 centimeter thick piece of wood, which you can then insert into the couch some of it. So we're going to say, uh, change that 1 to a 5. Give us a nice piece, thick, a nice thick piece of wood. Want to collapse our modifiers? First, we want to move our solidifier above our subdivision surface, as this will allow us to take the new depth we create with the sub with the solidifier modifier into account when um, subdividing the mesh to make it more curvier. Um, we're gonna make this mesh a bit smaller. So it actually fits inside our leather. That's going to be the couch arms. So we're going to tap into edit mode. We're going to select our faces on this one. We're going to press S in the X axis. Then we're going to grab our edge select. And grab this face and uh, these edges. G in the Z axis. Just a bit until it's not touching the top over there. And the same for the bottom in the z-axis just move it up and grab those faces still again g in the x-axis again this will change in a moment still move this up again as we're gonna apply the subdivision of the solidify modifier just making some adjustments before we um, start modeling more destructively move it up again and the same for this one move it down so we have some exposed um, fabric all around the sofa. Next, we're purposely going to apply the modifiers in the wrong order. Uh, this will cause a, a tiny problem. I'll show you in a moment. So we're going to apply it now before we apply it correctly. Next, I'm going to press the forward slash on your numpad. to show you something that occurs. The moment that you apply something out of order, you're always going to get some form of defect because the modifiers are supposed to be applied from top to bottom. So now that we have applied in the wrong order, our mirror modifier should have been applied first and then our, uh, our cylinder modifier. We're getting this inside face, which we are going to get rid of by just deleting it. Select the face and then delete. And set faces. Everything else should be fine as this is the only point around uh, where the two sides of the mesh actually touch each other as this side is separate and the side is also separate now we can go in we want to add one supporting edge loop across this side as well this side of the wood to make the corner a lot more tighter now we're going to go out of isolation mode by pressing the forward slash again You'll notice our mesh is now clipping inside of the couch. We want to select everything by pressing A. Then we're going to go G in the Y until it's not clipping. We basically want this line to be visible mostly. This, this new line that we added to be mostly visible. Don't want to have it everywhere visible or else you're going to have like a piece of wood that's sticking out like 40 centimeters from your couch. It's not going to be very practical. You'll see our couch uh, now more square, so now we can adjust it more accurately. But this also causes a little bit of problem since it's quite hard to see. We can enable our transparent mode so we can actually see the mesh on the inside. We're gonna grab these faces, these edges. Actually, we're gonna do vertex. Let's, let's do vertex. Select these vertices. We're gonna go into front view. And G the X axis, or grab this one, G in the Z axis, this one down, G in the Z axis, G in the X axis. I grab this whole face over here, not select those ones, G in the X axis, I bring this corner in, G in the shift. Y axis, so we can move it in the X and in the Z axis, but not in the Y axis. Grab this one, GG to edge, slide it up a bit, bring it in a bit more, bring this one down, this one over here. So we get a nice round looking end over here. 
this is pretty much fine next we can tighten up this corner a bit by adding a supporting edge loop and bringing it down grab these edges g just move them a bit around slightly make it less obvious that's exactly what we want next we're gonna grab these edges as you'll see they're perfectly at the top and it's at the, at the bottom we just want to add a supporting edge loop to tighten up this end and we're going to grab these vertices again we're still in transparent mode so we're just grabbing the whole end just bring it closer to the other piece of wood g in the x-axis just bring it closer to that one grab these vertices and just bring it up to the end and there we're fine our couch is now completely modeled everything looks fine you might want to move this one a bit downward so we're going to go back into transparent mode grab these vertices these vertices these ones we're just gonna move them slightly down g and the z axis it's all about here we grab the corner vertices g and the z axis it's all about there that should give us no problems at all this is exactly what we want or an alternative would be we move all the vertices at the bottom just a bit up then we won't get this very uh, far sticking out piece of wood so we're going to grab front face select all these vertices we're just going to move it a bit up and around here should be fine now our wood isn't sticking out as far as it used to and it's pretty good that looks a lot better so this is how the couch is going to look before we start uh, UV unwrapping. The first step in our UV unwrapping process will be cleaning up the mesh. We'll go, we'll start by applying all the subdivision surface modifiers. Apply, same for the sofa, uh, for the cushion, and then for the wood as well. Just click on the little arrows and then press apply we'll start off by cleaning the mesh by going to each mesh and then removing all the edge loops we do not require you want to press forward slash on the numpad to go into isolation mode you can also press forward slash on your keyboard where your question mark is it will do exactly the same thing just toggle between isolation mode and normal mode by pressing forward slash either the numpad or where the question mark is right next to the shift right shift okay we'll press tab and enter edit mode we will go to edge mode and then we'll select the edge loops we can do this by by going top down we'll see our curve starts at this point so we will delete every other edge that runs uh, along our y-axis as these me these edges won't change the shape if we remove them it's x and then dissolve these edges we'll do the same for these edges you can see we start with our curve over here Go back to top mode we don't want to select this one the next one onwards we want to start selecting our mesh again we want to select everything up until this point again as these edges over here again add to the curve of the mesh so deleting them will make our mesh less accurate to our example we'll do exactly the same over here not this one not this one this one but this one and we just go down again i'm gonna stop here as these ones over here add to the shape of the couch of the sofa dissolve edges our sofa is now clean. You can now press forward slash on the numpad again or on the keyboard. Press tab and forward slash again. So we go into our cushion. 
do exactly the same for the cushion by selecting these edge loops and then from this point onwards our curve starts again we're going to press x and we're going to dissolve these edges we're going to do the same for the side we're not going to touch this one and then grab these ones again our front and our back part of our seat is exactly the same so we so the curve starts here again same over here we're going to press x and we're going to dissolve these edges we can't remove any horizontal lines as they all add to the shape or the curve of the cushion press tab forward slash again we're going to head over to our wood panels by pressing forward slash tab here we will we'll, we'll immediately notice one anomaly We'll get rid of it by pressing on one edge then pressing shift alt and then selecting the whole edge so this will grab basically what should be in the middle we press g the x-axis and we're just going to move it until everything snaps back in the middle we press a press m and then by distance in case you have any duplicate vertices this will get rid of it next we will grab our edge loops going across our mesh and removing them up until the point that we reach these edge loops again where our mesh starts changing the shape again that will be up until this point so we'll stop here one last one we can press x and then dissolve edges the same for this area as for this the cushion the seat of the couch we will not be removing any horizontal lines as they all add to the shape of the wood next we will go to our top view we will start from here from the back work our way forward until again we reach the point where our mesh starts to fall off we'll press x and we will we will dissolve these edges, moving them from the mesh. We'll go to top view and align this line with this one, which means we can remove these ones back again. These four. Press X and then dissolve the edges again. The next thing that we need to do is go back out by pressing tab and then forward slash. Our mesh should now be clean. Our wood should have a lot less faces the same for the cushion and the sofa our next step will be marking seams let's start marking seams we'll start by selecting our couch as you can see we still have one modifier that has not been applied and this will help us speed up the process of marking the seams We select our couch, press forward slash, translation mode. And we will be using poles to speed up the process of marking the seams. So a pole is a point that has any number of any number of connecting edges that's more or less than four. So it can be two, or it can be four. So we're going to select this poles edges. Same for this side. And for the front side, we will be selecting this edge over here. This edge loop that goes all around, as this is where I want to join our Chesterfield texture to our leather texture. So I'm just going to select that whole edge. I'm going to remove these two as they're already crossing, crossing the line. I do not want that. We're going to use this pole to select the line that we want to place at the, uh, at the bottom of the armrest. So this seems a, a little bit less visible again deselect these two if you've modeled your couch correctly your seam the line that you have selected should go all around until the center of the couch again we'll now press u and then mark seam this will split our couch into four parts which we will use three different textures for texture over here our chesterfield texture here 
and then our leather texture will be on this area and this area. Next, we have to add another um, seam over here, to which we're going to apply our third texture, our first texture that I showed at the top. So we're going to select this one again, all the way to the front, all the way to the center. So select this one, and then you. From this pole we will be working okay we will press u and then mark seam so this uh texture region over here this area that's inside the seam plus this one over here will have the same texture we have our chesterfield texture over here and we'll have our leather texture on the front and on the side on the back now we're going to go out of isolation mode and we're going to select our cushion as for our cushion, we want to place the seam, seams in areas which will not be visible, so we can't place a seam at the top, and then nor at the front, or else you'll be able to see it uh, due to the fact that our Chesterfield texture has a lot of lines and folds in the texture, so you'll be able to clearly see a seam. So I'm going to go into isolation mode. For marking off the seams, we will select these poles over here to Use it as a starting point, this edge at the bottom back, this edge at the bottom. And we will be removing one, two of these, and then we'll be selecting over here and here. So this will place our seam off to the side. Press U and then mark seam. Go into out of tech edit mode and then out of isolation mode. For our wood panels, we don't need to mark any seams as they are already flat. So they'll just unwrap flat. It saves us some time. And we also do not need to mark seams for our feet as they already have the default sphere UV unwrap that we had. Okay, this is everything that should have seams. To get the seams mirrored over across the whole thing, we'll apply, apply our mirror modifier uh, by clicking the drop down arrow and apply. Okay, this is the one that you just applied. We're going to click on the chair and all the cushions. We want to apply. There it is. It just glitched. <laughs> okay, now everything should have no mirror modifier. Now we should have our seam placed all around the couch on exactly the same places. The same for the sofa itself, front, underneath the armrest and the backrest, and the same for the bottom, exactly what we, what we require. Press forward slash again, go out of edit mode and then these are already correct. Next we will, we will UV unwrap our mesh. To start UV unwrapping, I'm going to hide our reference as we no longer require it. Next, we're going to go to our feet and we're going to apply a mirror modifier that was not applied. Click on the drop down and apply. Now all, all our modifiers should be applied. We're going to select everything, press Ctrl A, and make sure we have uniform, we're going to do this so we ensure that we have uniform scale. Rotation and scale. So every mesh object should now have a scale of one by one by one so it's it's not stretched in any axis collapse that again now we're going to select our feet our wood our cushion and the sofa itself we're going to right click and join or you can press ctrl j our next step is to move over to the uv editing workspace We're going to select everything by pressing A. Now we're going to press U. We're going to say unwrap. And then we want to click from angle base to conformal. This will straighten our couch out, as you can see. Just go back to angle base. This is not, the, not what we want, as this will give us crooked lines on our uh, seat over here, cushion itself. So we're going to go conformal, and everything else should just follow it. 
our next step is going to be making sure that our feet, which are these large rectangles or squares, are actually the right proportion. I'm gonna press everything. I press A to select everything, UV. Then we're going to click Average Island Scale, which is going to shrink our feet down significantly. It's exactly what we want. Uh, next, we're gonna go and fix this one, this uh, this map, as it is gonna be the part that is this part of the uh, of the sofa. This is where Chesterfield texture is gonna be. It will cause some stretching, but it's barely noticeable compared to the other options we have. So we're gonna pick. Uh, any of these small quads. I'm gonna click on uh, vertex select, grab two of them, uh, left click, right click. I'm gonna go straighten in the y axis. The same for this one, straighten the y axis. I'm gonna select this one and then straighten in the x axis and then straighten in the x axis. Oh, select two. Straighten in the x axis. You want to press a line in the x-axis, line in the x-axis, and the same for the y. This will make this specific uh, quad, this specific quad follow the x and the y grid. So we just have to make sure that it is actually following the x and the y grid by just going around and then checking that the x-axis okay our next step is to select this quad you can see if it is actually correct by going over to this little the two spheres and then display stretching so this one is blue so it's fine you can see there's quite a lot of stretching it's not very much stretching but it's stretching nonetheless our stretching is just going to switch over to different parts when we start modifying the mesh. We're going to disable the stretching again and select this quad that we just fixed. And then when I say follow active quads, this will make our mesh uh, follow the X and the Y axis of the grid. This will make it allow us to apply the Chesterfield texture a lot better as it will follow a similar structure to what we use for the cushion. Now we're going to press A, press A to select everything, we're going to go over to U and then we're going to say pack islands. We want to keep the scale, we do not want to rotate, and we want to put a margin of 1% of the f a texture area, so 0 0.01. Want to press, I'm going to press OK. This will leave us with enough space between our UV maps. Or any bleed. We don't have to stretch uh, straighten this one as the leather texture doesn't have any um, markers. In this case the lines. These are fine. Okay we can now go file and save. Our next step is going to be making certain that everything is not touching anywhere. Okay, we can now head out of um, edit mode by pressing tab over here and then going back to layout. Now that we have our UV maps, we can mark our texture IDs and make a duplicate of the sofa and then export the duplicate. So. We want to select our sofa. We want to go over to vertex paint. Then we want to go over to the tools tab. We want to go to color palette and we want to add five colors. Let's do a red, a yellow, a green, a blue. And finally, a black. 
This will allow us to assign five unique texture IDs to our mesh. We go over here at the top and then uh, select paint mask. I'm gonna press tab to, ed uh, to enter edit mode. Press L and then press L on our sofa. We wanna press Shift H. I will hide everything except our selection. Next, we wanna press L and then wanna turn on seam on our link selected. It should be like this and then turn on seam. And do exactly the same for the bottom. Press L, as these two parts are going to have exactly the same texture applied to them. These are our selected areas, and these are not selected. And you'll also see that the rest of our mesh is hidden, thanks to the fact that we actually hid it. Now we're going to select a color, in this case red. Press Shift K, and this will fill, flood fill the area. Press Tab again. We'll then select this area. Which will be our Chesterfield texture. Press tab again. Select a different color. Shift K. We'll go into edit again. And select our last two parts. Which will have the same texture. We'll pick the green. Shift K. That should be everything. Now we can press Alt H to bring the rest of our mesh back. We'll now select our seat the cushion itself Press tab then we will pick our blue shift k to flood fill it even though this one and this one will have exactly the same texture the resolution will differ due to a variety of reasons us trying to minimize the amount of stretching that occurs on these corners um, if we do not do it like this we'll have a nice texture at the top, but a very small rectangles or triangles, uh, diamonds, on our seat, which will not look that good. Next, we will enter edit mode again. We'll select our pieces of wood, which will include the feet, as they all will have exactly the same texture. Now that they're all selected, we can just make sure nothing else is selected. We're going to select the black color, shift K. Now that everything is flood filled, we can head out of... Okay, these will be our ID map, so this will indicate which texture goes where. So we should have five different textures of... Three different textures of our five different colors. Four different textures. Okay, let's go over to object mode again. Next, we want to duplicate our sofa, shift D. G in the x-axis, we want to press it right next to our original one. We're going to leave this one as is, as we're going to apply the textures to it once we get them from Substance Painter. So this mesh we're going to explode. We're going to select our sofa, the, the seat. G in the z-axis, move it out of the way so there's nothing uh, making contact with any other part of the mesh. So we're going to select this area, this one, and this one. G the Y axis. Just select every wrong piece. L, L, L. G in the Y axis. And select this one to make sure there's no anomalies. L, G in the Y axis. Just move it back so there's enough space between each part. Same for the feet. Let's, uh, select the feet. G in the Z axis. So this mesh is the mesh that we're going to export to Substance Painter. Allowing us to apply the stitches to the seams to hide them. It will also allow us to overcome any texture anomalies. Because if we had these two meshes intersect, they would make little white dots on the texture itself. But since we separated them, the baking will no, not make any anomalies. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to select our uh, mesh. Which will consist of this explosion. I'm going to go File, Export, FBX, and then you can save it anywhere we'll be, where you'll be able to access it. In this case, Manchester version 2. 
you want to say uh, limit to selected objects. In this case, we'll limit it to the sofa only. And we only want to export mesh, the object type. Next, we can just ensure that we've actually saved our Blender project. To reduce resource usage, we're going to close Blender and then move on to Substance Painter. With Substance Painter open in front of us, we're going to start um, texturing our model. First, we're going to go to File, we're going to press New. We're going to go and select our model wherever you have saved your FBX. You want to open it. Next, I'm going to increase my document resolution to 4K just to have a sharper textures. We want to make sure our normal map is set to OpenGL as we're working with Blender for the rendering. Next, we're going to press OK. We should now see an explosion of our couch right in front of us. To move around, we use our Alt and Middle mouse button. So we'll press on your scroll wheel and then just hold it. To zoom in and out, you'll press Alt and then right button on your mouse. Zoom in and out, or you can scroll. To orbit around our object, so that will be rotate, we will press Alt and then left mouse button. We'll just continually use this throughout the process. Now we're just going to save everything, so that if anything happens, we have a backup. Let's say File, Save As. We're gonna, I'm going to create a new folder. Oh. Create a new folder. New folder, Final 2. Final 2. And we can just go in here and say Final. Final 2. So this is my second time that I've done this. Because I didn't record audio for the first time. <laughs> okay. And now that everything is ready, we can start by importing our textures. We're going to import two of the three textures. I'm going to show you which ones. You want to go to wherever you downloaded your textures. I'm just going to go and navigate there. Okay, the two leathers that we're going to import is this one. And also the Chesterfield leather. The other leather, leather does not work. So we're going to use a different leather inside substance that works perfectly and looks exactly the same way that our texture online looked before we downloaded it and tried to use it and it didn't work. So we're going to select both our textures. We're going to press OK and open it. We're going to define them as base materials. For our import locations, we have one of three choices, the current session, which means the moment we close Substance, so if it crashes, or if we close it when we're done, it won't be inside the program anymore. Project, which will bind these two textures to this project, so each time we open up the project, we will also have those textures available. Or library, which will make it available for all our future projects. I'm gonna import it to just this project, and I'm gonna say import. So put these two textures over here. Our next step is to select this layer and delete it. We're also going to add another layer, which we will use a bit later. Just a paint layer. So you want to click on the brush and then add layer. Next, we're going to move over to texture settings. We're going to click on mesh maps. Let me just get it to actually show mesh maps. And then bake selected meshes. Next, we're going to increase our output resolution to 8K. You are welcome to pick any resolution above uh, 1K. So we're going to change it when we export so anti-aliasing is another option we can apply you can pick uh, 4 or 16 for the samples i'm not going to turn this on as this increases the amount of time it takes to calculate the textures so it's going to make it a lot slower and on some devices it's not recommended so for the id map we want to change it to vertex colors as we have already uh, bind vertex colors to the vertices when we uh, made our ID maps. Everything else should be fine. Let me just double check. We've got our 8000 pixels. And there's no anti-aliasing. We've got our ID map set to vertex color. 
Next, we're just going to press Bake Selector Textures. This will take a while depending on how fast your machine is. It's going to go through each of these maps over here and then bake it. So it's going to be a normal and then a world space normal. And then in a moment, it will bake the ID map, which will be the black for the wood, yellow and green and red, and also the blue. And then it's going to do some ambient occlusion. This is going to be for the shadows, which we are not going to use at the moment. We're going to let Blender's lighting and combina in combination with the HDRI uh, to give us better lighting. This is a curvature map. It shows us how the curves are. This is a position map. The thickness should be next. Once it switch uh, switches over to the white color, now it's doing a thickness. To show us how thick the couch is, where everywhere it's thick, there's no thin part. And we're done. So all of our maps are now baked. We can go back to painting. You can pause here and wait until your textures are done baking. I'm gonna return to. Okay, now that you're back, we can start. We're gonna go back to layers. We're gonna click in here so these two aren't selected anymore. To apply a texture to our mesh, we're going to start with this texture. We're going to press Ctrl, hold it down, select our texture, and then drag and drop. If you see these colors, you're in the right mode. If you don't see them, um, you might want to try clicking on the texture first and then holding Ctrl and then drag and drop it. You want to drag and drop it on this red, which means it will be applied to both this area and at the bottom, which is exactly what we want. Next, we're going to uh, press Alt and just move a bit. So we're back inside the view. Okay, so now we're going to grab our Chesterfield leather. We're going to press Control also, drag and drop on the, so on the seat itself. No, click it again, drag and drop on the back of our chair. See, we have made a mistake. We're just going to grab, nope, keep this one, this one, click over here. Okay, now it's deselected. Now we can grab this one again. Drop it on the red. Okay, let's just see which one is the one that it's applying on the place. Delete that one, as we only want this one over here. So this is all of the textures that we imported. Next, we're going to move this panel a little bit to the left. As soon as you get that cursor. And I click on our smart materials. We're going to search wood. Gonna grab this walnut over here. It's the one that's gonna work the best. I've tested it. You can pick any of the other woods if you like their look a lot more. I'm gonna show you the settings for this one. And finally, we're gonna pick leather. This is gonna be. We're gonna use this leather to replace the leather, the third leather that we downloaded that isn't working properly. So this calf grain is going to work exactly the way we want to. And it's going to look pretty much the way the one that we downloaded should have looked. So we're going to grab it, drag and drop it again. Okay, just give it a moment so it loads. Okay, this is exactly what we want. Now we're going to start uh, changing the resolution of our textures. So they match more closely to what they should look like. We're going to start off by our Chesterfield texture, just enable, disable it. This way you can see it's the seated, the, the cushions part. We're going to inc increase the resolution to 3, which looks quite fine, exactly what we want. Next we're going to go to the back, which is the Chesterfield texture, just above this one. We're going to disable this link, we want to make it four for this one and then three for the other one might want to change that the other way around three for this one and then four for the other one there now we have more squared shapes and our size isn't too far off this one okay next we're gonna change the resolution of this texture over here so it matches something that's actually usable. I select it over here. Textures. I'm going to increase it to 10. 
which should give it some repetition, but we won't notice this due to its location. And that's fine. We're going to move over to the wood. We're going to select our walnut wood. We're going to go all the way down to the base. We're going to decrease the base's roughness. Scrolling all the way down here to 0.5. Make it 0.4. Which is going to give us a smooth enough wood. Next, we are going to decrease... We're going to delete some of these uh, parts of the material. We want to remove these wood fibers to make it a lot more smooth. So we're going to just select the wood fibers and then delete it. We're going to scroll all the way up until we reach the other wood fibers, which will be these dark lines. We're going to decrease their depth. By scrolling all the way down, we want to change this to uh, negative 0.01 which should be half the depth it currently is, making it a lot softer. We want to go back to our base material and increase its darkness. A couple of ways you can do this. Just shift its hue so we have something a bit darker, its value, which is exactly what we want. This looks quite nice. Okay. Now to make sure that everything is fine, we are gonna move over to this leather over here. We're gonna increase its smoothness by decreasing its roughness. Go to the calf grain. We're gonna go to base. And again, we're gonna click on the roughness and decrease it to 0.5. The lower you make it, the more smooth it will become over here. So we're gonna leave it at 0.5, which is exactly where we want it. We're, gonna, we're again going to apply safe just in case the program crashes. Just give it a moment to think. Okay, now we can scroll in and out again. Okay, all of our textures should now be fine. You can adjust the colors of the wood again by just changing the base of the wood. The same for the leather. You can change the color of the leather by just changing the base. I'm going to increase my wood's darkness still. It's still a bit too light for me. Make it a lot more darker. Like over here should be fine. That's how dark I want my wood to be. That's exactly the way I want it to look. Now we're going to press save for the last time before we start applying our stitches. Okay, now that everything is saved, so if anything happens, we can just start from here again. We're going to press. Um, we're going to X out our search. So we're going to cancel our search. We're going to head over to the brush. We want to make sure we selected this layer, this paint layer that we created before we started applying all the textures. We want to move our paint layer to the top to ensure that it's applied above everything else, not inside, above. So it should be in no other folder. Okay, then we want to go to this brush. We want to scroll down all the way until we start seeing the zippers and the other brushes until we reach our stitches over here. You can use any of these stitches. I chose this one as it's the one that cl most closely represents these stitches that are already on the couch, the sofa. So next thing we're going to do is turn on symmetry. So we half the amount of work, we just draw stitches. You can see the thing that I'm doing on this side is being replicated to this side. We're going to undo that. So you don't follow that along. Next, we're going to go over to our stitches and start changing its parameters. We want to change the size from 2, because at the moment it's quite large. And literally just play around, place a stitch, see it's too big. In this case, I want to change it to 0.75. Again, these are all values valid for a model that's made exactly as I specified. So this would give us a stitch fairly similar to that one. So that will work exactly the way we want it to work. Next, we're going to change the color of our stitches from the gray that it is to the same goldish color that the rest of our stitches are. So now our stitches should be the same color. Now we're going to scroll a bit up until we find the material. We want to 
add a height map, which is going to allow our stitches to actually have a height map, which is going to help us hide the fact that our two materials are joining right here. Okay. We want to go to a top-ish view. To have a straight line, instead of just going by hand and following a straight line like this, which is not going to be straight in most cases, we're going to click over here on the red line. Then you're going to press shift, hold shift, and then click at the end. We're going to go around. I'm going to press alt so I can just go a bit forward. Click over here and then do the same for this one. Make sure we go into the corner. Just a bit more. There. Press Alt, so we just move until we can just barely see the edge. Click right there in the corner. Just got to get it. And pull it all the way to the center. Now our, st our stitches should be near the edge of the that those two leathers. We're going to do exactly the same for the rest of the couch. We're with a couple of exceptions around like these corners over here, we're going to have to freehand this area as the straight line method doesn't exactly work there. We're going to go to a view where we can mostly see everything from the side. So it's a 90 degree view. Perpendicular to the surface, we want a texture. Go all the way up and apply our stitches. Here we want to freehand it. Make sure you are following this line that the two leathers are making. Whichever way is going to be the most comfortable for you. Just want to follow it and see if we can get it all. In a moment we'll go back to using the line method but it's just due to the curve that the lines don't work that okay, I want to do this again we just want to go all oh, that's not gonna work just want to go all the way down and again we're already halving our work by applying by using the mirror so it's going to do everything we do on the one side to the other side. I'm going to click here again, press shift, and we want to follow our, our curvature as far as we can before it starts changing shape again. So up until here, so just past our uh, stitches over here. Then want to press alt, move around the corner. Now we're going to have to do this part by hand again. So just grab that edge. That's wrong. Okay, we're just going to move closer, grab it, go around the corner. And anything that's not straight is just going to add to the character of the couch. Make it look like it was actually made by humans and not on a computer. It gives it a bit more of a handcrafted feel. And now we just want to have that stitches barely visible there. Click there, press shift, hold again, and then our stitches like that. Go in here and just fill in this gap if there are any. We should now have stitches all around the top of our sofa. We're now going to head to the bottom. These ones are going to be a lot easier since they're only straight lines. Okay, click in the middle. Hold shift. Select the corner again. Alt to move a bit. Add more. We want to make sure this area is clear. As you see, each time we press shift, there pops up a bunch of text in the corner. Press there. Hold shift. There's the text. It's giving us a bunch of shortcut keys. I should probably read them and see what they're saying. But I'm not going to care at the moment. I'll check that after in the recording. And there. We have now marked all our seams. Our couch is now ready for exporting the textures. We're going to save just in case anything crashes. <laughs> okay, we can disable our symmetry so that we don't accidentally draw on our couch again. So disable the symmetry and select any other layer. Any other texture should work fine because we can't do anything to that texture inside the viewport. 
and click file and save again just in case something goes wrong now we're going to go export texture we're going to make sure we have our output template set to blender principle bsdf so you're just just going to scroll down until you find blender principle bsdf inside it in this case since i already brought a model in from blender it picked it up we're going to pick our export location in this case i recommend you make it the same as your substance painter project We are now gonna go in, locate that file. Desktop, watch videos, 3D art, which is couch, and then file two. So this is where I'm gonna save my textures. We wanna change our size to whatever size you want your textures to be when you export. So if you're gonna use it in your game engine or inside Blender in this case, I'm gonna pick 4K since that's gonna be a nice high resolution texture for rendering. Once everything is fine, you can say save settings, you can go back again, to file, and then we can export the textures. You can just press the export button now. Everything should be exported now. We can now close Substance Painter and head over to Blender again. Now that we're back in Blender, we can start by saving a backup of our file to ensure that we have a version that has this exploded mesh if we require it in future use. At the moment I'm just going to delete it as I don't require it and I already have a backup of this um, blender, blender file. Now we're going to select our sofa. We're going to go over to shading, workspace and now we're going to Click on our sofa again, move over to our material, select new. I'm going to click on the principal BSDF and use Node Wrangler to get our textures. We're going to press shift Control t It's going to bring up this menu for us. We're going to navigate to wherever we saved our textures, which will be final. In my case, we want to select all of the materials as they all will be used when constructing our principal BSDF shader, constructing the material for the shader. So we're gonna select our, uh, the alpha, the base color, the ambient occlusion, the emission, the metallic, the normal map, and the roughness. Everything should be set up now. Our texture does not look quite right at the moment, but it's not too far off. We're going to fix this by selecting our world over here and then changing from color to environment texture. <clears throat> we're going to click on open. This is where we're going to import our HDRI, which we downloaded during the setup of the project. We're going to navigate to wherever you saved your HDRI. Okay, let me just find it. I saved it under HDRI materials. So let me just check my portfolio. And we're going to go over to HDRI and backgrounds. And I want to select our Paris. Our little Paris Eiffel Tower. And I'm going to open it. This should set it up in the background. Next, we're going to go under our render. Then we want to go under film and we want to tick transparent. This will give us a nice transparent background as we don't actually want to see our HDRI. We just want the lighting, which is exactly what we got here. Perfect. Now we're going to open our render collection again. So we can see our camera and our single light. This is the angle which we're going to render from. Okay. So now we're going to just press Shift A. We want to add a cube. We're going to go back to layout so we can start modeling our set. So we're going to go to layout. We should put us back with the cube 
across our sofa. We're going to enter to edit by pressing tab. We're just going to scale up this cube quite a lot. Let's say th uh, three times the size. S3. So this will increase it to three times the size. So it's going to be about six meters by six meters by six meters, give or take. You can verify this by going out of edit mode. Clicking these little arrows, going to the item, and these are the dimensions of this cube. Next, we're going to go face select and delete these three faces as we do not require them. Basically, we want to see this area here at the back. Next, we want to make sure we select all of these faces. We're going to go mesh, and then we're going to go normals, and then we want to go flip. So our normals are facing this side of the, the inside of what used to be the queue. Okay. Next, we want to select our edges over here, here, and here. And we want to control B. So we want to bevel them. And we want to bevel them just slightly. As to give them a smoother edge. Next, we're going to press Shade Auto Smooth, which is going to shade it smooth. We're going to go press zero on our numpad so we can see it inside our couch. We're going to move it up all the way until it's just below our couch and then G shift Z until it covers our camera and our camera cannot see the edges. G and the Y, the X, and that should be perfect. G and the Y a bit, G and the X, G and the X axis. So it's not clipping into our sofa, as our sofa is going to be spinning. We can move to the top view and see this is not exactly what we want. G, Shift, Z. We want to move it about, I'm not going to say our origin point, but maybe we want to put our origin point over here. That should be fun. We're now going to go back to zero and see how that looks. That looks excellent. Next, we're going to grab our couch. We're going to press R. And we want to tilt it on the y-axis by, uh, let's do 20 degrees to, for a test run. So we're going to press R on the y and press 20. And I press R twice. R on the y, 20. It's a bit low. R on the y, 10. Oh. R on the y, 5. Okay, 5 degrees should work. R in the x, 5 should give us a slight tilt. So this is just going to help us get the light bouncing off the correct areas. Here we can go back to check sh uh, to shading workspace. That's exactly what we want. Get some light bounces in here. We're going to go over to our EV renderer. We want to enable ambient occlusion. We want to enable, we don't want to enable bloom. We want to enable sp uh, screen space reflections and that's it now we're gonna go over to our light as this light is quite bright we're gonna click on the data I'm gonna change it from a thousand watts all the way to I think one watt is what we're gonna use in the end over there might want to grab this sofa and just move it forward G shift Z and then just move it more into the center. So over here should be fine. We're gonna click on our cube. We're just gonna grab these edges. I'm gonna go G in the X axis. So it's just outside our frame and we're gonna grab the same with this one. G in the Y axis until it's outside of our frame. I'm gonna keep our corner over there. So there's a focus point just slightly off central for couch. Our couch should be the main focus of our tutorial, a four for our render. Again, we're just gonna continue. We might wanna re re uh, reduce the amount of light our world is giving off. So we're gonna click on our world tab over here under HDRI, point one. Let's see what point one does. So this is too dark. Let's try point five. Still too dark. Point seven. Uh, that doesn't look too bad. Let's move up a bit. Point eight. That's too much. 
no, that's eight, sorry. Point eight. Still, so one is gonna work fine. Okay, this seems to have fixed a bug. Now we should be able to see all of the angles of our texture. It doesn't look too bad. Go back into this one. Next, I'm, I require a 10 seconds render. So I'm gonna go over to the animation tab, select my couch. I'm gonna increase my timeline to 600 as I will be rendering at 60 frames a second. So it matches the render for this video, frame rate for this video. So I've increased my timeline. I have to go over to my video, the output. I wanna change my frame rate, which is over here. And I wanna set it to 60 frames. So it will render at 60 frames. So each 60 frames will be one second. So I have 600 frames, which will be a total of 10 seconds. We are now just gonna um, animate it. So we're gonna press this one. Then we're gonna press I. And we're gonna insert rotation as the location will stay exactly the same. We're gonna move to frame 600. Uh, sorry, we're gonna move our start to what it was. I reset it to zero. Okay, we're gonna move our current flame, current frame, which is this first one, to 600. I'm gonna grab our sofa, press R in the Z axis, 360. So we'll rotate it once around. I'm gonna press I again to insert another keyframe, which will set the keyframe for our rotation and our scale. Now we can press zero to go into this view. We can change our material over here into the render property. We'll change the background of our the color for our floor in just a moment. We're gonna press, we're gonna go back to frame zero using our timeline and then press spacebar to see the speed at which our animation is gonna play. This will show off our texture. And this is the video you will actually be seeing when you open uh, the, the, the tutorial for the first time. The speed is okay. There's no anomalies that I can notice. Perfect. Now we're gonna change the color of our floor to something that's a bit more useful and not as bright. As this contrast is too high. We're gonna be selecting Color, just grab one. Okay, I'm gonna add a new material. Actually, I can add a material. Yeah, no, I'm gonna add a material. So we're gonna add a new material. I'm gonna pick a color that's, um, I wanna do an orange. Red's gonna show too much. Let's go and pick yellow over here and let's make it a dark uh, this is too dark <laughs> Go over there want to move this one up a tad G and the Z until it's just starting to clip so just before it clips the the leg over here which will just barely touching the floor for zero again we're gonna um, grab this color, increase it a bit, move it a bit more to On second thought, I'm not gonna render um, any colors here, but you can if you really want to. You can just change the color of your scene to, for instance, you want a light gray, actually. I think the color that I'm gonna pick is a light gray. So I'm gonna set, reset it back to zero by pressing zero on everything here. And then the value we're gonna push to one and then I'm gonna just slightly decrease the value until we have a light gray. Right around here. Let's go here. And give this another spin, check how it looks. Everything should be fine. And this is where I'm going to leave you guys. 
This will be the end of the video, as you can see. To render our animation, we go back to the first frame. You can click here at the top, right next to your file and your edit, there's a render and then you can press render animation. For our render settings, we will go into our output. We will, instead of PNG, we'll set it to FFmpeg, which is a format that is supported by YouTube and a variety of other social media networks. We will select FFmpeg. Everything else should be fine. You can change your color management settings over here or any other settings. In this case, my video encoder, which is already set to the one it detects from my GPU. Our output quality is fine. Everything else is excellent. And now you can just go over to render. You want to change your output location over here. This is where you're going to save your rendered file. If you're on a device that is going to crash a lot and you don't know if it's going to crash or when it's going to crash, you can always render your video out in PNGs and then use Blender to stitch them back together into a sequence that you can then voice over or you can um, then join to get the video like for this turnaround. But that's where I'll be leaving you guys for today. See you next time.